Hello and welcome to another video. This video I'm going to talk to you about reasons why you shouldn't vote no in the upcoming referendum. Um, I should explain again, as I did in the earlier one, that the images you see here are not mine. I took them from the internet. I have not intentionally infringed anyone's copyright and I apologise if I've misused somebody's uh, images. Um, I'm not here to tell you to vote yes or no, only that you should vote and you should write yes or no on your ballot paper. I should also say that uh, my experience as a white, middle-class, retired 70-year-old man doesn't have any similarity to the lives of many Aboriginal people, so what I know about them is based on what I've read on in the newspapers and magazines and what I've seen on television and heard in news reports. Uh, as I said in the last video, I explained the reasons why you should vote yes, and now I'm going to try and explain very briefly in only seven minutes why it is that you should or might want to consider voting no. Changing the Constitution is a big issue. The Constitution is the set of laws or rules by which the, the nation is governed. Uh, they were That Constitution was written in 1901 and we're now in 2023. If we're certain that the Constitution still is fit for purpose and does what it, sh it was intended to do, then it's a case of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. On the other hand, if it's not doing its job, we should modify the Constitution when we need to. We shouldn't modify it just for the sake of it. We shouldn't change it just because it feels like we should change it. We should only put things in it that need to be put in it. Now, the no case, their, their biggest argument is to say, well, if you don't know, vote no. And since the government has not provided any real detail about how this body will work, who will be on it, how they'll be elected, whether they'll be paid, if so, how much, where they'll be based, how long they'll be a uh, member of the thing, whether it'll be elected people or appointed people, whether they'll serve for one year, three years, five years, or something like that. None of that detail has been provided by the government, because they, or the yes case, because they say, well, there's no point in doing that until we've the referendum's passed. If it's not passed, it doesn't matter. So we don't have any detail. And if that's a concern to you, then it's a good reason to vote no. The second reason the no case says that you should vote no is because they say that setting up this body will divide the nation by race. And by that, what they mean is that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people represent about 3% of the population. We're about 26 million people, so that represents about 750,000 people or thereabouts. The no case people say it's not right that 3% of the population should have a special body that does things for them that the other 97% of the population doesn't have. Um, they say that's unfair and discriminatory against the other 97% of the population and therefore you should vote no. They say that the uh, there are existing bodies, including a full Department of Aboriginal Affairs in Canberra, to tell the government how to manage uh, issues related to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and that setting up another body would just set up a further bureaucracy um, and a further layer of uh, rules and regulations rather than do anything to improve the life of Aboriginal people who live in a remote community in far, far northwest New South Wales or far north Queensland or somewhere like that. One of their biggest arguments, the no case, is to say that once it's established, the voice would be able to make representations to the government on any matter that they felt they wanted to make a representation on, and that they could, in fact, challenge all and any government legislation in the High Court. And that would tie up the government in litigation and defending itself in the High Court, and therefore the government would not be able to do its job, which is govern the country. Now, there are some High Court judges who have said that would not happen, but there's at least one former High Court judge who has said that is entirely possible and it could happen. I don't know, I'm not a constitutional lawyer, um, but I imagine that you would have to uh, prove that a particular piece of legislation was going to be discriminatory against Aboriginal people in order to um, mount a challenge in the High Court. Setting up the body doesn't mean the government is compelled to listen to the body every time it makes a recommendation or follow its recommendations. It just means that the body could provide evidence or recommendations to the government. Um, the no case say that there is already millions, if not billions of dollars, spent on matters relating to Aboriginal people in, in this country, 
and that setting up the voice would only add further expenditure to um, matters relating to Aboriginal people, but wouldn't necessarily lead for any any better value for money or any better outcomes for Aboriginal people or any demonstrable improvements in their lives. Um, And therefore, if that's the case, we should vote against such a body. Um, They also say, and this is another one of their strong arguments, that once it's established, the Aboriginal, the voice could make representations to the government about things like a treaty, compensation and changing Australia Day. Now, I don't know about any of those things with absolute certainty. Uh, I'm not sure how we can talk about a treaty when there's never been a declaration of war but perhaps that could be possible. And talking about a treaty doesn't mean there would be one. I don't think there's anything harmful about talking about these things. Talking about compensation seems to be a bit of a stretch because this body cannot spend any money. It doesn't have money to spend. Uh, And talking about changing Australia Day is one of those things that we talk about from about the 20th of January to the 28th of January, and for the rest of the year we then go on with our lives and forget about it until next Australia Day. And again, I don't necessarily see that talking about it is a bad idea. I don't necessarily say I agree that Australia Day should be changed or not changed, but I don't think we should ever say, well, we can't just talk about that matter or we can't discuss that matter. Well, I hope that it's helped you to understand some of the reasons why you might consider voting no, and it's made your decision a little bit clearer. Thanks for watching and listening, and thank you for supporting my channel, and I'll talk to you again when I'm making another video, which I hope will be fairly shortly.